The northern wing of the People's Democratic Party may have finally decided to abandon the idea of fielding what had been termed consensus candidates and its forthcoming presidential convention. This has come as the party continues to fashion out a way of arriving at a mutually accepted presidential flag bearer for the next year's elections. When the idea of a northern consensus candidacy was first mooted, it wasn't everyone that welcomed the idea, including our next guest. His name is Excellency Sule Lamidou, Lamidou, a former governor of Jigawa State in northwestern Nigeria, and a one-time Minister of Foreign Affairs of Nigeria. Welcome, sir. So glad to have you join the program this afternoon. Now, it seems you didn't exactly share the idea of a northern consensus candidacy in the PDP from the very start. Um, can you speak to us about why that is? Well, hi, Tope, Aaron, and Hawa. How are you? Well, fine. Fine, sir. thank you. All right, sir, I'm just going to take the question one more time, just in case you didn't hear me. Um, it seems that you didn't uh, originally share the idea of this northern consensus candidacy in PDP from the very start, and uh, we wanted to know exactly what your reasons were for that. You see, I don't want to be dragged into the kind of controversy of a northern-southern thing. Uh, PDP is one Nigerian family. It's both northern and southern for Muslim and Christian, for all other tribes in Nigeria. And so any effort to dichotomize it or divide it you know, along regions or zones or regions you know, is dangerous for the party. It's also dangerous, dangerous for Nigeria. Because we're trying now, at least now, to restore our common trust in Nigeria. So this division, I don't argue very well for Nigeria. And I don't think it's proper for anybody to indulge into them. I don't think so. So uh, we, we had the reaction, we, we had the Production from Angu Abdullahi, and uh, it was claimed to have been from the Northern Elders. But luckily, luckily, the Northern Elders or a, a, a Northern Elder Forum also denied the statement from Angu. And so we don't want to get you know, entangled into fighting each other, you know, Northern Elders, Southern Elders, what have you, Nigeria, you know. So, so it's now we're not put all this, you know, it, it, it has been put to rest that, you know, the issue of Northern. Uh, Northern consensus is not there, not there anymore because, like we said, you know, PDP is a single Nigerian family. We don't want to be divided into North and South. We don't want it. And that is, please, let's not leave it at that. Let's maybe begin to face, you know, the, 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 the 23 elections, you know, how we're going to get our party properly positioned, you know, united, you know, strong, so that Nigeria can, can, can be saved. That's our, that's our position. All right, your position is PDP is a united family here in Nigeria, but the issue of zoning is still a very topical issue, which many, including key stakeholders in the PDP, have described as the bedrock and the building block of the party right from the year 1999. Talk to us about this. It's topical to you in the media, not to us. It's topical to you because it's you who won't make news out of it. You know, look... There was a committee put in by the PDP, all right, to, 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 to look at this of zoning. And uh, the committee, you know, worked very, very hard under the chairmanship of uh, the governor of uh, Beno State, uh, Autumn, and uh, we made a submission to the party. And so to us, you know, we are through that. We don't want to preempt whatever, what we're going to go, what is going to come from the party. You know, we made a submission, therefore we'll leave it at that. We don't want to go into any discussion how, what we discussed, how we went about it. No. It's not, you see, what we want, you know, is to restore confidence and trust in the party. These, you know, discussions, you know, called by media people, people like you in the media, are creating a lot of problems for us. Please, leave us alone. Please, leave us alone. Well, I, I really wouldn't say that it's just um, zoning, it's just a media creation, because we've had groups like Afeni Ferry, we've had Pandev, we've had Oanese Indibu, we've had so many social cultural groups come out to say that it is the turn of the Igbos to produce the next president of Nigeria, in the, in, just in the interest of justice, fairness, equity. So what's your take on that, sir? Who is doing the education? Who is the judge of this? Is it a fair, fair? Is it meant or is it, you know, a, a 
If they were well, then coming to PDP, that's what I want to say, I feel the very and the men coming to PDP, and then canvass their cause within the PDP and make a case for, the, for, for whatever it is they want. And they will look at it and they will say it's brothers. So there's no way somebody who is not a member of the PDP, or, to, or part of the PDP, will simply go and begin to indulge the kind of, uh, what I may call, you know, lazy discussion. It's a very, very lazy discussion to me. Let men, or a fair or men, or, or how do they come into PDP. When they join the PDP, then we can discuss with them. Okay, now still on the PDP, uh, we're talking about the amount of damage. In your opinion, uh, do you think, how much damage do you think the party would personally suffer if they miss out on a chance of returning to power after 2023? Power to where? Power to who? Power to the I presidency. To power to where and power to who? Uh, to who? The people, of course. To who? Well, of course. To, to, to Nigeria, to Nigeria or to who? To Nigeria, to the people. Eh? Well, would like, first of all, I would like to know how much damage the PDP would suffer if it fails to return to power. And then, of there course, you can nothing, also talk about what, is, is what... purely... You can also talk about how it will affect Nigerians see, if the PDP does not return to power. Now, now listen, when you talk about damage, there's nothing like damage, you know. I mean, people out of the PDP keep on talking for PDP. I saw the meeting, you know, of uh, what they call, you know, Southern Elders, whatever they call, you know, when they met in the Lagos. And I saw people like uh, Pa, pa Adebanjo was saying, and I felt it was very, very injurious for Nigeria because Pa Adebanjo is not PDP. <laughs> he was not part of being part of PDP. And in any case, in any case, those who get in Lagos, if they won't talk about, you know, their own time to be, to be considered, let them come and feed the northerners. Let them, let them convene a northern conference. Then they will come to the north and say, okay, fine, this is our own case. You don't simply sit down, you know, preaching to your own people. The given there was purely over the southern Nigeria, talking to southern Nigeria. So they are only talking, talking to, to themselves. If they want to talk to us, let them come and convene a northern congress, convention, or northern world assembly, and they can say, fine, this is a northern assembly, therefore we from the south want this from you in the north. And then we we'll discuss, we we'll engage them, and then we we'll see their case, and see whether, we, and they will look, look at you know, as brothers in Nigeria, but not, you know, calling a southern, southern group, talking about the same southern interest. <laughs> to me, it doesn't make sense, because you are only preaching to the converted. People in the south want the presidency. So talking there about, about, you know, cursing their ego, inciting them is not the answer. If they won't talk about, you know, about issues, let them call for a northern assembly where they will come to us and they say, okay, fine, we're coming from southern Nigeria and this is our interest, we want you to do so, 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 so. And they will engage, they will engage us and they will discuss. But not the way they are going about, you know, I mean, it's still divisive. They are as divisive as the northern elders. We don't want people to keep on dividing this country for God's sake. Let's give the country a chance to grow. I mean, people who have been, who, who, who Nigeria have been there for them for the last 50, 60 years, who became leaders in their own right, who became ministers, elders, and leaders, let them allow others to also grow and be like them. So they, the, the next 25, 30 years, where people like, you know, young men, you know, who are going to be like Adebanjo, like, like Edwin Kelly and, and the Angabri Lahi, let them also grow as Nigerian because Nigeria gives them space. So please, let them allow the younger generation to also have a space in this, to appear in this country, and they have a space to also grow like other elders. These things are very, very divisive. Very, very, for how long do you know about North, South, men? In, and how could somebody begin to say, somebody who, who, who cannot even control the Yoruba votes, power at the banjo, will not say, look, it's time for the East. I mean, in which way does he make any, 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 any that kind of, you know, proposal, you know, realistic? How does he actualize it? Can he guarantee the East, the, the, the Yoruba votes? Can he guarantee that? If he's talking about, you know, East, and uh, because he's not caressing their ego, you know, patronizing them, by some level of condescension. Can he guarantee the Yoruba voice to the Evos? Can he? So I, do, I see the approach is very, very wrong. You know, with all respect to them, you know, I respect them, they're elders, they're leaders, they're all right, but then please, you know, give us a chance, give them a, a chance to have peace. You know, stop dividing us. That's my feeling, that's my position. All right, um, let's talk, uh, since you saying that people from the outside cannot influence what is happening on the inside. Let's talk about the people within the party right now. Some of the presidential aspirants, the Bukola Saraki, don't forget you know, the likes of Boga Tukum, um, Peter Rubi, Yesa Wike, Bala Mohammed, Dele Momodo, Emmanuel Udom, to mention but a few. 
Now, talk to us about this candidate. They've presented their intentions, some the ideas about governing before the Board of Trustees. How confident are you in the quality of the aspirants coming forward? Do you think they are strong enough to upset the APC and get back into power? Let me make, me, make, make this very, very clear point. All our aspirants, you know, Saraki, Bala, 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 Kaura Bochi, Atiku, Tambual, Hatuddin, Wike, and the others, you know, who are aspiring, you know, Anyim Pais Anyim, Peter Obi, all of them. You see, they were our own invention. They were known after PDP invented them. You understand? I mean, seven years ago, ten, you, never, you didn't know them as, as, as serious candidates. You know, so PDP brought them into limelight. PDP got, gave, you know, honored them, dignified them, made them what they are, for them to acquire the current, you know, limelight, to be what they want to be. So please, stop, you know, disturbing us. What I'm saying is this, you know, all these are our own creation, our own invention, they are made by PDP. And therefore, they owe PDP everything. Including, you know, giving the party you know, some kind of peace for them, for the party to grow. So we are not going to come to a right stage and say, okay, fine, this is Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. B. No, please, you know, we are working very, very hard. You know, Nigerians are, are, are waiting for PDP. When you keep on, you know, introducing issues which keep on dividing us, talking about personalities, you make things worse for the country. We are working very, very hard. First, to be able to ensure that, you know, we go a single family, PD family. North or South, whoever we think will be South Africa will produce him. By the time we produce him, we are going to produce all the best candidate for Nigeria. And then we wish that there are these, these fears which Nigeria are going through now, this year of insecurity, this year of, you know, lack of understanding of each other, you know, lack of love, lack of empathy. I mean, these things which, which have destroyed Nigeria, they will be restored. So please, give us the time, give us the chance, please. I mean, you keep on simply peeping into our own you know, uh, compound, and, you know, talking to us, please, if you want to talk to us, come inside. Those who are talking about PDP, zoning, whatever, let them come. Let them no, but you are on the let inside, and that is why we are trying to pry into your mind to find what, what, out how what, what, solid that this candidate ahead of 2023. What should I answer you? What, what, come, 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 in, come into the party first. Yeah, come into the party. When you come to the party, you can ask me. You see, we, are, you see, we know our supporters. We know those who, who didn't believe in us. They believe in us. So if you are, you are out there in Arise, you know, with your beautiful, you know, pink tie and what have you, you know, talking about to the PDP, leave us alone, I beg. Leave us alone. Well, talking about um, the people that the PDP has brought into limelight, there's been a persistent story about former President Goodluck Jonathan breaking ranks with the People's Democratic Party and joining the APC with the intention of again running for president, does this bother you in any way? I feel sad for Jonathan. I feel very, very bad for him. Like I said, you know, this is somebody who 10 years ago was not known in Nigeria. A former director in, in Ompadek, then a deputy governor, and then a governor, and the, you know, and then, president, then vice president, then Nigerian president. You look at the rise, it's all through PDP. PDP gave him everything in life. He gave him the biggest reward anybody in PDP can attain. I mean, he has been there more than any other party in Nigeria. I mean, how many of us have become Nigerian party? Only three of them, Obasanjo, Yaradua, and himself. Is he being fair to PDP? So Naka is the very party which made him whatever he thinks he is. The limelight, the international you know, uh, 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 role he's playing. Was PDP's you know, creation? Was PDP facilitation? How could he come and begin so that he won't go and, 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 and run under APC, the very party which vilified him, which demonized him, which called him names? I mean, I mean, I feel sad. Maybe, I don't know, but, but I feel, you know, he needs to have some relation with who will come to his eyes. Don't believe in PD, APC. Don't believe that because they are the who removed from office. APC removed the from office by blackmailing him, blackmailing PDP. I was called because Jonathan, I was called a pastor in the North, called Jonathan. I stood by him through thick and thin. I was in the north. I was being said somebody is a pariah, somebody who is against the northern interest. Because I believe in Nigeria. Now, for Jonathan now to begin to contemplate, even believing in the PDP, to vie for the presidency makes me pity him a lot. I just pity him. I really pity him. Mm.
It is quite incestual, the, uh, the politics that are playing out right now. But speaking of that, what do you think about PDP's increasing loss of power in the Southeast stronghold? What is the, come again, what is the question? PDP increasingly losing power um, over the last couple of months, especially within the Southeast. Wanted your opinion on that. People in Southeast, you know, are PDP. In every family, they are, they are PDP. It is you who are, who are trying to introduce this kind of issue into their own mind, but then they see us as part of the same family. Look at the history of Nigeria. We be, I mean, look how people was, was, was formed in, in, 19, in 1998. There are a number of things we took into consideration <coughs> before the party was formed. And because it was formed with people who are real thinkers, who are leaders, there is so much wisdom in PDP formation. So please stop, you know, diminishing it. But in this question, I very, I mean, the way you are putting, you know, you are diminishing the PDP. You are diminishing us, for God's sake. Leave us alone. No, but it's clear uh, the handwriting is on the wall. Several um, southern governors, we've seen them defect from the PDP to the APC. This is not diminishing anything. Yeah, this is just simply stating the facts. Those who left, those who left the PDP will come to know the mistake they made in their own lives. Any governor who left PDP and went into APC well, one day, you know, in, the, in no time, in no distant time, we can sit down and then cry and cry and cry and say, God, forgive me, pity, forgive me. I, that I can guarantee you, that I can assure you, because, you see, it is the office they now occupy, which is simply saying, their own ego, giving them a wrong notion of their own self -worth. All these governors talking, you know, we live in PDP, going to APC. I, I, you know, it is because the office, you know, around them is deluding them. The office they occupy, you know, gives them a false notion of their own self -worth. Therefore, they think they are leaders, they are big. The PDP gives them what they are, remove the office. They can't talk. Remove the office from the, all of them. Remove the office. They can't talk. I, I, I've been a former governor myself. I know, what I, I know what I went through, and I know what I, what I am now. So I don't think, you know, these governors who are now going to APC, romancing APC, you know, are mature, you know, that, you know, there is all cause, you know, a day when there will be a payback time for them. It's coming. I identify it because they are our own brothers. I mean, they are our own children, political children of PDP. They are our own invasion. They are made by PDP, honored by PDP, and dignified by PDP. It is not fair even culturally to do what they are doing. It's not fair. I mean, it's not in the culture of the African to betray, you know, the very thing which made him. It's not in that culture. Where are we heading to? What kind of legacy are we giving the younger generation? You know, a legacy of, you know, you know, of simply pursuing the ephemeral, that you worry about your entry, you can do anything. I mean, does it mean, I mean, how do you grow as a nation? Why people have no character? It can't work. Now, you've talked earlier, you talked about Nigerians um, waiting for the PDP, yearning, in fact, for the PDP due to the security crisis in the country, the economic hardship, and so many other problems confronting the nation at the moment. But some would argue that all these issues were in existence, even when the PDP was in power. If the government of the day is to be believed, the PDP actually laid the foundation for all what we're going through at the moment. So how then does the PDP intend to correct, you know, all this if it gets into power? I see some element of uh, maybe a contradiction or confusion in your, in your, in your, in your, in your, in your statement. You are saying Jonathan, who was PDP president, will now want to join APC to be the Nigerian president. I may see who the PDP governor is now running for the presidency. You understand? Adamu, Adamu, Adamu Abdullahi, the current chairman of the PDP, of the APC, was also a, a PDP invention. A PDP, you know, man who we made. So you see, the entire APC is now owned by PDP. The entire APC, the 30 million, those who went to, who left PDP were the very ones who carried the dangers who are going through into APC. That's why they, they failed. So, so I mean, who, what is APC? Remove, you know, Aladamu, remove, you know, Goje, remove Wamako, remove Amechi, remove all these, you know, key players, remove Salaki and, and, and others who were earlier in APC. Or even Atik was there in APC. I mean, these are people who were PDP for who went and brought in APC. So, so you see, let us, let us learn to be more, more, more reflective and see, really, what was Nigeria's history in the last, you know, eight, ten years? What were the issues there in this country? And where are we today? So you say PDP cannot 
Fair enough. If I be say, look, and I mean it. Today in Nigeria, it's either PDP or not or not Nigeria. This is my feeling of, because if you bring back APC again in 2023, this country will literally evaporate. Because right now, APC has been dev so divisive. You know, I've been saying this over and over that you know, they've introduced hate into Nigeria. We hate each other. We don't believe in each other. We don't trust each other. We, de we, de we de demean each other. And that Nigerian thing, which may say Nigeria, you know, of strong history and strong, you know, tradition and strong values, which made, you know, a leader of the black race, are all gone by, P by APC government. They've been destroyed. So what I said is, destroy the very country we had, which was there for all of us home were growing, which made whatever you are, and see, how do we therefore go say, you know, they know we chart a new course and restore PDP and put it back, you know, to, to course that, what, the way it was at formation and then begin to face human development. There, I've been saying this over and over, over and over. Look, there is no way a country can develop if there is no trust. And there is no way, if there is no trust, there is no way can you know, what we call stability or peace. And there is no way you are going to be healthy human development if there is no, I mean, so this is a giant sequence. You know, trust, stability, peace, and human development. And this is thing which APC literally destroyed. They weaponized poverty. Today, Nigerians are very, very poor. They are hungry. They are angry. They, 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 are, they, are, they are unstable. You know, we have lost, you know, our human essence. You know, we are confused. It's all in the, induced by, by APC. And they, they, they have the guts. They won't, they, I mean, that, you know, we fail. How? They are the biggest failure in, in, in Nigerian history. The biggest failure. These characters who are running the APC government are the main Nigerian problem. That topic of trust is quite a large one uh, that comes into discussion quite a bit. Um, and you were also talking about the breakdown of trust and, uh, you know, confidence that the Nigerian citizens have in their government. And you also talk about the politics of divisiveness. So my question to you is, how do we begin to build that trust? Since you are from the inside and you have a lot more insight on how these machinations uh, go about behind the scenes, what are some of the things that are done, are being done to build some of the trust? It's, it's, it's very, very easy and simple. You see, as leaders, what are we aspiring into? We should not tell lies. Because the younger generation are very, very innocent. We exploit their innocence and tell their lies because by, by tradition and culture, whatever the a leader says, the younger man will believe him. But they will you know in the last eight years of APC government, you know, they've been living, you know, under a culture of lies, upon lies, upon lies. Right from right from their formation. I mean, you see, it's very, very un African for a leader to tell lies. But that's what the culture of the, PD, of the APC. They tell lies, they demonize. They divide, and so one first, you know, that you know, all those who are for, looking for public office must have the honesty of their own courage to say the right thing, no matter what may be the consequences. In trying to acquire political votes and garner support, you don't keep on telling lies, dividing people, deceiving them. It's wrong. It's un African. It's unfatherly. So, first, you know, let us make sure they know that we have something called moral benchmark as people. In Nigeria, you know, we must have to call moral benchmark. And from there on, we begin to build on that so that there's something we should not do, no matter what. And this is my feeling. And therefore, when you begin to be truthful and sincere and honest, and then the younger they will be, we change their orientation. And then they begin to see what is called leadership in you. And by the time you get into office, because you've been very, very honest in, the, in, in trying to get their own vote, whatever you do in government, they'll say, yes, I trust you because we feel that whatever we're going to do, we're going to do it in our, in, in our best interest. Even if you don't have the, enough money to do the job, they say, no, we know if you have the means, if there are enough resources, you can do the job. So the trust thing is very, very important. And that, so to me, the beginning for, you know, have, how do you do define the kind of moral benchmark for all Nigerians? So they know the younger generation cannot be simply exploited because we are now using their innocence in promoting our own political interest. All right, so let's talk about the state of the nation here in Nigeria. And let me quote um, the former Senate President, Bukolo Saraki, who says Nigeria has become the capital of kidnapping. Where we find ourselves today, does it bother you? Capital of what? Poverty or what? 
No, he says Nigeria has become the capital of kidnapping. So I'm asking well, the question, I mean, like? does it bother you where we oh, find what ourselves I, what today? I, what I'm saying, well, you can go ahead, please. These are, these are things you report every day. These, you know, kidnapping. You see, I think today in Nigeria, the biggest challenge is how do we remain sane in this insane environment? How do you make sure that you know you remain sane? Because apparently the thing you never in your, in your life, you know, ever perceived or ever even thought of in your life are happening. So what is wrong with you? What is wrong with us? How do you remain sane? This is incredible whereby human beings have been taken as merchandising, as merchandising you know, of making money. They are merchandise. Human beings have been turned into article of merchandise. You go, I mean, you go and bomb, you know, a rail truck, drop a train. You understand? You, you go and hide a whole family, you know, and hide it somewhere and say you want some money. And, and this family, you see, I, I mean, I, I'm anguished. I'm agonized by this, to be honest. And the world is looking at us. And they begin to understand, you know, are people in Nigeria saying at all? Are they saying? What, leader, what are they doing? Leaders, what are they doing? Because these things are happening every day. Kidnapping is happening every day. Right now, those who are being kidnapped from the train, I think they are, you know, in, in the bush. With small, small children, small children there, you know, in the bush. So we have lost our human essence. What do we do for God's sake? We have delinked from the human, from human society. We have delinked. How do we restore ourselves? So it's for the government, for us to be honest and say, look, these are the issues. And then stop, you know, saying that, you know, those who are saying things are wrong are saying so because they want to criticize the government. No, it's not about getting the government criticized. It's about saying that the government is failing. Please, government, do something. Do something. Save us. We have the right to talk. Government, please save us. That's what they are saying. And, I mean, the political side, you know, are this country safe? I, I really wish you could come to uh, the north and go be somewhere around Zampara or even Katana, where Buhari comes from, you know, or even Sokoto. Go, go, go there. Go there and see. And you can't drive, you can't drive from, from Kaduna to Abuja, you can't, by road, you can't, drive, you can't drive. You see, because you are there in Lagos, away from the epicenter of the, of, of the odium we are going through, away from the epicenter of this hell we are going through, that's why you can begin to look at it you know, in a very, very abstract way. But then it is real. These things are real. Uh Please allow me to take you up on a statement you made earlier. You said that the APC is owned by the PDP because most of the people that make up the APC defected from the PDP, yet the country is disintegrating into what it is at the moment. Doesn't this show that there's something fundamentally wrong with the PDP that you also claim has produced the APC? No, no I don't think the nomenclature P, D, P is, some is wrong. Because even in APC, there is also a, you know, there is also a, 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 a P. So the nomenclature is innocent. What I say is you know, that you know, we, the actors, we, the Nigerian leaders, we know what we did wrong. And we know what we are trying to hide away from. So let us, for, you know, maybe close the chapter of the past. And then see, how do we then sit down to rediscover Nigeria? and then play the right role we should be playing as leaders in this country. It's true that, I mean, look, whatever you have in APC is PDP. And then the, the same APC again, I've been mean PDP. You see, sometimes when I look at, you know, people like Lai and others who are abused, in, in any case, look at Lai, Lai himself now, he's not in trouble, he, even APC, he's, he's lost out, you see. When you talk to what you lose out. So when I look at people, you know, abusing PDP in APC, I begin to wonder, you know, how can they look at, you know, how can, how can in a kind of, you know, in a committee of people who are there, people like, like uh, Amechi, like Aulai Adamu, like, 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 like uh, Pabio, and all these, are, uh, Ngige, all, all these you know, PDP invention, when they abuse PDP, how do they feel? But to be honest, I mean, when the APC say, AP, PDP are thieves, PDP are rogues, PDP are evil, how do they feel? How does Aulai Adamu feel when they talk about the PDP? How does he, uh, the APC, how does he feel? How does Rogers feel? How does, you know, uh, Ngigi feel? How does, you know, uh, Amit feel? How do they feel when they are being abused? Because they are abusing their own history, their own family, their own foundation. How do they feel? That's the problem. So, so, so you see, to me, maybe because I'm fairly old now and uh, my values are, may appear archaic, 
But then, you see, we need to restore our human essence. That we are first and foremost human beings. You know, with the high level of elevation by God, you know, because he gave us intellect. We have the power to reason, to rationalize, and understand, and do the right thing. But then we are doing the wrong thing with our brain. So, like I've been saying, today in Nigeria, and this is my own feeling, well, you see, I think God is in own, you know, mercy. After creating human beings, you know, give them intellect, you know, I think he used some kind of thin membrane to encase our brain. To cover it, you know, so, you know, evil thinking cannot go into the brain. But then apparently the Nigerian thin membrane covering our, cover, 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 that membrane covering our brains from perceiving evil thoughts is now torn away. It's, so, so it means anything can rush into Nigerian head. I thought, how could they say, how could they be a much by selling, you know, human, human parts? You know, in a country, you know, they are selling tongues, they are selling eyes, they are selling legs. In a country where you kidnap people, I, 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 I talk about merchandising. In a country where, you, I mean, look, there is something wrong with us. So it means that, you know, membrane encasing our brains from evil thinking has been torn away. How do we restore it back? So we pray, God, please, God, restore our that membrane, you know, encase yes. our brain from evil thinking so that we can forge ahead. Otherwise, yes. something is wrong with us. Well, sir, we'd like to thank you so much for joining the program today. And I'd like to say you're not old. You are just very well experienced and seasoned. So uh, thank you so much for joining the program and having this discussion with us this afternoon. We hope to have you back sometime soon.